six days of the Magic and Human Design Rave Festival 2024. We're one of the few events actually who are um, bringing together uh, uh, professionals and newbies and uh, all these wave of teachers. Uh, so yeah, that's quite but, an uh, engineering feat, and I I really I really appreciate it. I really do. And I was just saying before the recording started how how wonderful it is what you're doing, and how brilliant it is to have two powerful women um steering this and it, I just love the energy that you're bringing to it I really do and the way you're being inclusive is just fantastic so yeah well done <laughs> thank you yeah, thank you Rachel. well done must be a lot of work I for mean, you you know the work uh, uh, doesn't feel like it's work when it's done out of strategy and authority it's more feels like being and we're just being vessels of something that comes through and uh, including the the teachers that we are uh, inviting it's it doesn't feel like we are inviting anybody because you know we we talked to some first wave teachers that we worked also before because uh, the festival is a natural continuation from the marathon that's been uh, happening a few years in a row online yeah, and then the teachers are recommending us their their uh you know teachers that they know or their students who became teachers and and we are listening and uh, we are just listening and and following the flow. Yeah. Generally, there's not much uh, decision that comes from analysis that happens. It's it's more of, of literally the event that comes out of passion and. Yeah. truly a desire to experience a human design system through those who are passionate about it, who are passionate about just observing life and, and following it and being a passenger, sitting mm -hmm. on the back seat and watching and how it is. What do you see? I'm wondering, what do you see? <laughs> Where did, does your story begin, actually? Uh, how, did, how did you come to it? Uh, to human design let's start with this for example yeah yeah sweet no I love your curiosity about that it's so nice because most people don't ask me so it's nice to share yeah I met it by accident in 2006 I was on like a healing retreat and one of my friends was being offered this mini reading and this guy who was reading her chart got me confused with her and he said oh come on come and have a look and I was like nah nah, nah I'm not interested it's not not for me anyway he did my birth you know took my birth details in the end and he goes come on you've got to look at this you've got to look and he showed me the chart of a reflector and I was just like wow and everything made sense you know and I was I was quite angry for about three or four years after that because I was like everything just gets thrown into me and I'm just like open and I felt upset about the conditioning like it's not fair you know it's not fair that I get so conditioned and on the trauma I'd been through um, but then gradually kind of got used to it and did a live in your design. And then I trained a lot with Darmen, you know, Darmen Swan Herbert. So I met him in 2009 and I've done most of his courses with Leela, you know, his partner and enjoyed it, you know, really got support from them and did the transformation course in 2012. And, you know, I did my uh, PHS about that time no maybe 2010 and then trained in as living your design guide and so I've been doing that since 2014 um but my my focus has been on like the entry level because my background's in training and I love teaching and training and I just kind of wanted to scoop up as many people as wanted to find out you know it's like yeah let's do this together let's learn so I used to be in community learning, so it's like I like creating those groups for people. And then I did the analyst training 2016. I don't know how I managed to qualify as an analyst because it's so hard, you know, for everybody, let alone a reflector. I mean, some kind of miracle happened <laughs> to get qualified, you know. Um, but I think, like you were saying earlier, Julia, it kind of, something is happening that's bigger than we are and if it wants to happen then it will you know so it just drew me along um 
So yeah, I'm grateful for it. I mean, the main thing is just the basics, like decision making. And what I'm recognizing right now is that this, you know, it's my experiment. Whoever else is on the journey it doesn't really matter. I can meet them and be friends with them and say hello to them. And whatever teachers there are, you know, you can say, oh, great teachers. But actually, it's it's about your own experiment. That's what it is. You know, this is about me and my experiment. And I chat to people who are in it. But actually, you know, I'm the data in my experiment. And that's what I'm learning from is every day through strategy and authority is what's absolutely correct for me. And tr learning really to trust that very deeply. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to say, really. <laughs> oh. Well, <clears throat> how was your life pre-human design? Um, I mean, I was doing a lot of therapy. So I've been in therapy since I was like 18 and trained in psychotherapy and lots of different modalities. And I was on the roof when I met human design and my life was okay by that point. Pre-30, it was a real roller coaster, you know, a real nightmare, a real challenge. Um, oh. Yeah, and very traumatic in lots of ways. So I went on the roof and I was like, yes! <laughs> 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 yeah. so, I, we, we have another six to uh, reflector oh right i'm a four six yeah ah, four six yeah yeah okay. so but i also became a sannyasin at that time so i became a sannyasin of osho so it, a lot of my friends are sannyasins of osho it's interesting that quite a lot of human design teachers are sannyasins or were and that's when I met so I met Osho when I was 30 in the in, you know not in, in form you know but through his, his, his teachings and then my husband is a sannyasin so I became part of that community and that, that felt really cleansed you know cleansed from the whole 30 years of trauma to and challenges to being um yeah to, to enjoying the observer role really enjoying it and now I've just come off the roof. <laughs> so I've had a, quite a, a ride coming off the roof. Um, but, you know, that my whole human design journey has kept me well. So even though it's been quite a rough ride coming off, I did a rough menopause, I have to say. Being in my strategy and authority, like, protected me from trauma. So I'm good. You know, I feel, feel good now. Um, yeah. So before I met, I met human design when I was 36. So yeah, it was a good time to meet it. <laughs> yeah. Always the right time, the right synchronicities. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Do you, do you want to share anything about, about yourselves? Mm. Um, no. <laughs> but I was thinking, can you tell us more about your offering? Uh, because um, it's uh, not very often that uh, we can get such a workshop and from a reflector. Uh, it's going to be very um, interesting and useful. Yeah, I mean, I've been teaching this since well 2014 you know since doing the living your design workshops and having quite a lot of reflectors come to me for support and also as an analyst the last seven years um I do do a lot of readings for reflectors so that's kind of a big part of the reading is the lunar cycle and um guiding people with that and I think what I felt excited about in terms of offering it is that it kind of I think it's important for people who have got an idea of what the lunar cycle is about and what that means could mean as authority, but just don't get it because there's so many reflectors who just don't get it because they don't have enough. There's not enough uh, people to support them, you know, and um, or maybe they're not looking in the right places. But the information that's out there for reflectors is not that, you know, it's not a lot, really. Even the living your design manuals, a lot of inaccuracies in 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 that manual. Um, so what I hope to share in the workshop is really my own experience of what it means to have a lunar authority and what that's like to live that 
to really trust that and to really be able to rely on it you know and um you know it's only something that people can experiment with on a daily basis or on a monthly basis and see what works i mean like for me it took from serious experimenting through really getting support to experiment with it, it took a few months to really kind of get it or feel it and it's something i don't know it's like with you both with your authority but it just it just percolates through the body it's just like a the body kind of knows the body feels it and it's like it, it clicks and it's like yeah that's it I can feel it that's that's what it's like to trust myself to feel my authority you know the body knows so people coming to a workshop maybe they could be reflectors it would be great and also maybe people who work with reflectors so who could support them um and what I would share actually would be the difference between the mechanics. So you've got the the transits and you go, oh, yeah, the gate's there. That's that gate. That's that gate. But actually, that's not what the authority is about. The authority about is about the passage of time. It's about being willing to be a witness to what's changing and to observe that. And as much as possible to allow the witnessing of it. You know, just say, okay, that's changing, that's changing, that's changing, that's changing. Ah, okay, that's changed. And then see after a month, you know, what, what, where, where am I now? You know, what's changed in that time? And where am I with that decision that I was, or that dilemma? So, you know, as a reflector, I put a decision or a dilemma into the cycle and see how it how it evolves like putting something into a washing machine you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> going around um yeah i mean it's honestly the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me is to to get my authority it really is because then you know you've got it that's it nothing can nothing can change that um can take that away um wow. so i suppose what i do in the workshop i mean i I guess I haven't actually mapped it out yet, but I do. It's how I teach it, you know, in my courses or in, in the reading. Go on. Um, there is this thing with the reflectors, and I myself have quite a deep connection with reflectors. Just this month, I gave like three or four reflector readings. It just keeps coming. And, and you know, there's quite a split in the approach that I'm learning from different teachers, both reflector teachers and not reflector teachers in human design. Uh, so one approach says that in the reading, we need to give a uh, reflector the, the system of how to follow transits. And there's another approach that says the reflectors, they, there's not so many reflectors that would actually study gates and channels and all of this after the reading and we need to give them more just like what you were saying the feel of strategy and authority and not just push them into mm, looking at the gates and understanding all of that so what is your approach uh, how how do you um, see that process of uh, really initiating reflectors into the reflector hood yeah i mean yeah great question i mean i i teach both but i then i say to them you know y this is your experiment you experiment with it and see how it works for you so i would teach the mechanics so i would say show them their lunar pattern and show them the cycle based on their own uh connections you know with the moon and that's how I was taught in the beginning. I was just showing a spreadsheet with these are these are your lunar connections, your lunar connections. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> then the mind's going, oh, gate 14, what's that mean? And gate 21, what's that? Yes. And and then you get into this mental story about what it should mean, but it doesn't make any sense because so many other variables, factors, you know, are there with other transits. And sometimes I do get a flavor of like, this is gate 14, I know what that feels like each month um but the container of the authority isn't dependent on knowing the mechanics so 
So we would introduce the mechanics and say, this is your cycle. These are the gates. Now go and meditate on these gates and observe what does that mean to you? And how does that change over time? So what does it feel like, you know, that to have that whole channel, the 214, what do you notice? And then see over a few months if you notice anything, but don't let the mind try and tell you it should be this or should be that. Because actually sometimes, I'm sure this is the case for you as well, often you look back on transits and say, ah, okay, that's what was happening with that. It's often in, in hindsight that you notice something. But yeah, so I'd give them the map, give them the cycle, and ask them to re sort of meditate on those channels. You know, give them some good descriptions of those channels. Say in your own time, do that. It takes a lot of time to do that, to witness it or to observe it. But then I'd make it really clear that the authority comes from the passage of time and what changes and being able to, yeah, like I said, I suppose, allow that or watch that. And so the container itself, you don't need to know what the gates are. I think it's good that they have them and then they can see, play around with it, see what works for them, but not to get caught up in the mental story of this gate is this and this gate is that. Because the way I experience it, for me, for my authority, is like, say say I've got a dilemma. Something happens, like a little argument with my sister or something, and I think, oh, God, she's so annoying. She's really annoying me. And then I say to myself, okay, this is this moment. It's a snapshot in time. It's going to change quite soon. And then the next day it's like, oh, she's all right. It wasn't such a bad thing after all. <laughs> and then a few hours later, it's like, oh, I really like my sister. She's so wonderful. And then a few hours later, she's like, yeah, I really love her. She's so gorgeous. <laughs> um, and so then after two days, it's no problem at all. It's gone. It's finished. It's passed. So there's that no truth in the now thing. Like it's for emotional people. Um, but what I would do is take people through a few sessions, you know, and say, how does that work for you? I think a few sessions is good to help them with it. Um, what else? I'm trying to think other ways. I think the first thing is recognizing that this is just a snapshot, you know, what's going on right now. And for me, it's like, Obviously, the big decisions take a lot longer, like moving house and stuff. Um, like when we were buying this house, we saw it and we thought, yeah, yeah, that's our house. But I know, I obviously, I have to wait. I thought, if it's there in a month, it'll be for us. My husband is Bleenick, and he was like, yeah, 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 this is it. And so it's just that whole thing of like, oh, God, got to wait, got to wait. <laughs> and all these things just happening. And there's a moment thinking, oh, no, it's not going to happen. It's not for us. And then the guy who was selling the house, he met us. He said, can I meet you? And we started, we connected. We were talking about the global shifts and the way the planet's changing and about meditation. And he said, you've really got to have this house. I want to sell it to you. And ours was the lowest offer out of all the offers. And it was obviously meant for us, but that happened exactly a month after we'd seen it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I kind of give examples like that, I suppose. Um, Yeah. I have a question. <clears throat> um, so when you met human design and you found out you were a reflector and obviously people are like, oh, that's so mysterious and so special. Did you feel different before meeting human design? And after you found out you were a reflector, did that make you feel special or in a way it comforted you that you finally find out why you perceive life like that or how was your process uh, I'm just wondering uh, about that yeah I did I did feel different and I felt lonely actually a lot of the time I was really lonely because I wasn't recognized you know the essence of who I am or maybe a few people recognize me and and I think I looking back probably a lot of people did but essentially in my family um like a lot of people just treated like generators and you know I put a lot of pressure on myself to be 
you know, to perform and to sort of be something I'm not. Yeah. No, but I did feel different. I noticed myself now. I used to watch a lot and I used to be seeing what was going on. And I really wish that as a child, I could have been encouraged just to be part of something, but just to be on the edge and to be able to observe and to be drawn out for what, what I can see. And now I really allow myself to do that. So when I'm in groups, I actually really love groups because I dip in and out and I can just be on the sidelines and feel really part of it, not feeling like, oh, I have to be right there in the middle or I have to be doing what other people are doing. And I think what helped me actually was um, in 2013, we did a human design experiment, like a festival in Ibiza. And somebody initiated an experiment with, um, we had like teams and we had to make a, a sculpture outside. And I was part of a team and there was a generator by getting all the stuff to fit it together. The projector was guiding it. And they said to me, no, no, you just sit there. You just watch. I said, but I can't watch. I'm not allowed to watch. And they said, yeah, yeah, you just sit there. You just watch. And I was like, oh, go on then. <laughs> so I was just sitting there on this wall watching them like that. <laughs> And um, they said, oh, no, it's good. It's good what you're doing. And they showed me, actually, that me watching made a huge difference to what they were doing. They really appreciated it. They said, oh, no, it's wonderful. And we actually got a lot of praise for this thing that we made, and I hadn't done anything apart from watch. And they said, oh, yeah, it was just so beautiful, your presence, being an observer. And so... Yeah, if I'd known now, if I knew then what I'd know now, I would just be enjoy being that, that watcher when I was younger, rather than rushing around, I guess. But now I honestly don't really see myself as a reflector. I just see myself as me, you know. Yeah, just being me. And, yeah. I think being in the human design community, this is why I'm interested in coming, is like being able to be recognised by type because we can relate to each other through type, can't we? So being able to be seen as a reflector by others is beautiful. Yeah. And reflectors um, and projectors are really here to be the awareness and um, in a way, I see it because I'm also 5'1", so I have a different understanding. It's somehow to be here for the other, in a way. Mm. Although you both are right angle profiles, it's um, the type which um, is so different and um, valuable to, to the whole and to the community as well. And then comes my other question to you. Um, it has been a tough couple of years and um, in the world. So I'm really curious, um, what have you been noticing and um, picking up and uh, tasting um, in the environment and... Um, maybe for your community and your environment, but also as humanity as a whole? Um, yeah, I see a lot of collapse. You know, I see you can't get an appointment at the dentist or the doctors. <laughs> Trains don't work. Like went on the train today and then one was cancelled and, you know, lots of things not really working anymore. I notice that every day. Um, I notice more awareness, you know, more people are waking up and I really love that, but the system itself is, is collapsing. I'm very aware of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Veronica? What do you see? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm watching, I'm definitely watching and thank you 
for your question. Uh, I see humanity being very confused of what's going on, what's happening, and um, losing their ground under their feet. It's a lot of confusion. Actually, I just had a question from my daughter today. She's 13. And she asked me, mm, why are you leaving us these worlds? <laughs> What's the sense of it all? I have to go to school and then I have to work and then what? And I'm like, yeah, you're getting it. It's those mm, track tracks of the train, if we look. Uh, at how our lives were organized um, and in what we were born in these huge organized entities. The tracks are falling apart and the train is uh, derailing. Um, that's what I see. And it's in all parts of um, society and humanity. And um, yeah, it's it's collapsing. And um, I'm not seeing so much hope as I would like to. Mm -hmm. It's honestly, it's. <laughs> but I am a sarcastic person, I would say, or ironic. I see the irony in things, and that's what's keeping me like a good laughter <laughs> on all of that. And the absurdity of it all, you know, it's so absurd that it, it becomes funny. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. That's what I see. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mm. And Julia, what about you? <laughs> Since we're <laughs> into that topic. <laughs> it's interesting to hear every type we have here almost. Mm. <laughs> And it's always different, you know, with me, it's simple because I don't even trust what I see <laughs> having an open Ajna. And <laughs> I more, I much more trust what I feel and uh, what I feel very much depends on my environment, where I am. So sometimes when I'm connecting with my Israeli friends and with my Ukrainian friends, with my Palestinian friends, you know, I see a lot of despair, a lot of pain, a lot of fear, uh, and realization that the cross of planning is already dead, it's already gone. And uh, when I connect with my Bali friends and my Thailand friends and uh, whoever, you know, Costa Rica, South America, I see beautiful life and the peak of the golden age and People are doing amazing things and really deeply connecting and uplifting the frequencies. So it's so polar, the, 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 the situation that happens at the moment. So that's what I feel. <laughs> and through the feeling, I guess, I also see. The, the, you know, this question, actually, that we are all looking uh, at and building our festival also around this question of 2027 and the jump of the, whatever you call it, era, uh, the crosses, uh, what we use in human design, it's, the shift is, I mean, the future itself, is different from how we understood future in the past. And if in the past we we, we all were going together to some kind of future, yes. now it's like there are many different futures and they will they are so different that they are completely unrelated. There will be futures that are deeply rooted in nature, the futures that are deeply rooted in technology and AI and all of these chips and the brain, whatever, and they're all of the futures in between. So uh, that's that's the way I see it, and that's the way I understand it. Uh, strategy and authority is the the tool that allows us to 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 align with the 
naturally attuned trajectory to us and that's the most important is literally to to stay on the track so we all can keep being satisfied and surprised and successful and uh, uh, literally feel in deep peace with wherever we are no matter what the externals are for mm -hmm. for some people it is correct to be in the war and i actually know the person who's out of strategy and authority found themselves in that deadly party you know and in israel and uh, kept on fighting with whatever needed needed to be done in that moment and felt completely at their place at the right time at the right place and for someone else it was exactly the opposite so we don't know that's that's and finding peace and satisfaction and not knowing i guess that's also the 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 reason for our our beloved system to to be there for us and and that's what we are doing with the festival is we are all learning to go in that space of relaxation and not knowing at the same time yeah so yeah. that's the most practical thing to do to get grounded in your strategy and authority and um they that's what we're trying to create with the festival that we get together in aura uh and also online um as a possibility that's why we're doing a hybrid event so we really open it to the entire world but also give the possibility to meet and experience ourselves um in, in real life and experiment with uh, other uh, human design enthusiasts. Um, mm. And really, really, we see it as a hub, the festival, where we're going to get people who afterwards will dissem disseminate even further this knowledge because it's really grounding and it's really helpful in those times. That's like super practical to navigate this um, craziness and this illusion that we're living in and with all this false information and all this is happening and it's so difficult for, for people to find clarity and um, peace of the uh, place of peace when where they can rely really on on something inside which is there for them to to lean on and and to feel um, their own essence, their own authenticity. So that's what we're trying to do with the festival is to, to give that platform for people to meet and exchange and grow and learn and experiment and experience together mm -hmm. because we are connected. So I have a sense it would be very nourishing, like it would be nourishing on so many levels, uh, feeling nurtured and nourished by that shared connection because there'll be a lot of people coming who don't necessarily get a lot of contact with others in human design and yeah I remember going to there's a, a conference in 2012 in Ibiza with um it was just after the year after Ra died and there was a lot of people there was, I met Christine there and Nisarg and Dirk and a few other people and I think that's the time when I felt most recognized as a reflector because there were 13 of us and so other people were like, Ooh, <laughs> like this, Ooh. Um, and that was really nice. So, we, um, but I remember in that time just feeling this beautiful um, recognition from others um, in a really powerful way, and that and that will kind of be like a seed that will just be fertilizing a lot. I think for the future, you know, the fact that we're coming together and. The way that you're organizing it, I think, is is brilliant. So, but one one question I have actually is how my online workshop will fit with coming in person. So, is it possible to do the workshop online and be there as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but um, since we are uh, recording this. Maybe we should uh, finalize and then we can go to the details. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much for um, sharing yourself um, with uh, the public. Um, 
you're going to bring your own uniqueness to the festival. And um, I'm sure that a lot of people will find your workshop very uh, inspiring and interesting and clarifying, especially for reflectors themselves. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, um, to be present and um, to to tune in to your personal experience and experiment in these years you were there. So thank you very much for your time and uh, presence and for your kind words, because we really appreciate with Julia the feedback that what we're doing um, inspires also others because we are very inspired, but we love to hear that also others are inspired by our work. So thank you. Wow. Yeah, Kate, welcome. Yeah. Get your tickets today. See you soon.